What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and I promise today's video is going to make you cringe. So get that dislike ready, or maybe that like if you just like us to go out there and debunk stuff, but we are going to build an entire computer using all of the methods people tell you not to do. Just because we can afford to absorb the cost in case it goes wrong, but in case you've ever wondered what happens if you do the things people tell you not to do, we're gonna find out what happens when you do all of them. Build from NZXT lets buyers customize their gaming experience based on their desired FPS goals in today's most popular game titles. Choose the game you want to play, set a budget, and Build will recommend the best parts for your build. Want to get gaming faster? Then choose Blitz Mode and order before 11 a.m. Pacific time and your order will be built, tested, and shipped same day. To learn more about NZXT's Build, follow the link in the description below. Now one of the first things people will tell you not to do is build on carpet. So we rolled out the red carpet, literally. We need a case, and for that, we went with the NZXT H500i. Where's my knife? The H500i is actually the replacement to the very popular and inexpensive S340, which is a chassis I've really enjoyed. But NZXT has sort of moved to this entire HI series, and they're intelligent cases. They link with their cam software. They allow you to control things like fan speed based on chassis temperatures, and we chose the white and black one. I just, you can never go wrong with white and black stormtrooper look. It's classy. It has nothing to do with the fact that my car is white and black, but maybe just a little bit. And as you can see, it has a window. And not only is it a window, it's tempered glass. So at the price point that we're at, not bad at all. So it's got one exhaust fan on the top, one exhaust fan in the back, and then of course it brings in air through the front and a big opening right here on the bottom and the sides. Wire channeling built in, controller right there for your lighting and your uh, fans, obviously, because this baby right here actually lights up. Now I actually had a hard time coming up with my own list of things not to do because I guess my best practices have been in effect for so long. I reached out to Twitter to see what are the biggest don't do this that you've seen passed around the internet. So we'll start things off here with Zachary. He says, don't touch anything without an anti-static wristband. Not only are we building on carpet, I'm not wearing a wristband, and unlike another famous little YouTuber, I don't wear them around my ankles either. That one or that one. I feel like I'm peeing on a hydrant. We'll go with an EVGA X299 Micro. We'll do that because this allows us to use one of the most useless CPUs ever, the 7740X, which is one of my particular don't do this. One of the things I've also seen people say not to do was don't place your components on top of the anti-static bag because everyone seems to believe that the static cage that this uh, bag actually is is designed to only protect static from the inside, not the outside. Well, I, don't, I, mean, I guess we're gonna find out right now, aren't we? Also too, treat everything like it's made of delicate glass. And then with that, I would agree. Treat it as delicately as you can. This is why computer building is so easy. The only thing I would agree that you should be delicate with though is actually the socket, if you wanna know the truth. The socket is fairly delicate. There's a lot of pins in there. In fact, in this one, I believe there's 206, or two, 200, 2,066 of them, I believe, 2066 socket. The threader for comes along, <laughs> 2,000. Cute. Cute. <laughs> we need glue in our CPUs. <laughs> so now the board's directly on the carpet. Actually not supposed to uh, scrape the components. Obviously. You mean like that? Ow! I pinched my finger. Ow! I swear to God, there is a scientific-ish purpose to this video. Emphasis on the ish. But we've never been known to be exactly the most scientific around here anyway. And that's okay. You know why that's okay? We do the things you shouldn't do to show you why you shouldn't do them, but usually at the end of the day it works, but we still say you shouldn't do them. But I've never actually done this, so that's why I'm doing it now. We need to actually flip these fans around. We don't want these exhausting air. No, we want all of the airs to go inside of our case. So we are putting every single fan, maybe we should do every fan as an exhaust. So now we're like literally pulling everything into the cracks and vents. I put it in the wrong hole. Damn it, story of my life. Now I would like to point out that I am touching so many components right now. I am touching solders, I am touching traces, although the traces are usually coated on the motherboard to protect them. I am not being delicate with this. 
that. Jay, don't touch that. That, like that? <laughs> it's can can dancing. No, no, this power supply, the 1600 watt. Okay, so not this CPU that I'm touching. No, not that one. Okay. Oh, I've had touch ID. Now we're gonna do wires. But you don't want all the wires behind the computer where you can't see them because you want to make sure they're all plugged in. So although NZXT provides all of this amazing wire channeling, that is not what we want. So make sure to shove them all forward. That way you know they're there. We need a cooler. For this one here, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Fractal Design S24. If you guys can't tell, this is kind of my baked in H500i review at the same time because I like to review cases in a real world format and let's just say this build doesn't get any more real than it is today. We don't want this bringing in that dirty, nasty air from outside. Mm -mm. It's not what we want. We want it bringing all the dirty, nasty air outside. So that's why we're using our brain on this build. You just have a nickname. Cause you're like one of those cool guys. It's like, I have a nickname. Yeah, I'm like J, but two cents. When it doesn't start to thread, just make sure you push it even harder and then it will start. See, just like that. I'm amazed there isn't water coming out of the right now. <laughs> no, my brain is telling me, like like my, my wire management senses are like, ding, ding, like, like Metal Gear when someone starts to detect, jink. Like why did I just touch, why did I? What is the sound? It's, it's like, chink. I'm not calling anyone that. Jeez. Now we need thermal paste. I should say the methods we use around here tend to get a little bit, uh, where's my pinky? Yeah. So here's how we're gonna do it today. We are going to spread it around with our finger. Now, you see how it's getting on the little cage there? Like, that's probably. I don't think that's enough. I think that's fine. I don't think that's enough. No, I don't want to actually ruin the hardware, Phil. I thought that was the point of the video. No, this is this is not a cheap computer. 99% the right way, 3% the lazy way. I put 102% into every bill. So, I want to place this the other way. That's okay. We don't need to. I mean, the thermal paste is already on there. We can just reuse it, right? So. <laughs> Not like air can get trapped in there or it'd make a bad seal. Make sure to tighten these down going around and not a crisscross pattern. Instead of going down straight, we want it to just sort of roll and smoosh onto there like that. Like, yes, like, I have to consciously think about how to do this wrong. Yeah. Time for memory. Now we don't have a lot of different kind of memory around here, but we've got, we've got some choices here. Those are empty boxes that we can use. Now there's a method that I like to use here. Jeez. Everything you know is a lie. They want you to think you should match all of your sticks. And to that I say nay. So we're gonna be putting in a single stick of this white RGB vengeance memory that's actually not labeled how fast it is. Now we are gonna use this 2400 megahertz four gig stick just to the left of it because this is, a, this is a ballast stick. When the right stick gets overused, it'll use the left stick first. G-Skill Flarex, this is actually an eight gigabyte 3200 stick optimized for Ryzen. Now here's the thing, Intel's jealous of Ryzen. So we need to make sure that we actually get that, some of that Ryzen speed in there. So we're gonna stick this one over here. Now for the last stick, I'm gonna go with this one right here. This is the DDR4 Predator. Now the reason why I'm using the Predator it's not because of, you know, get to the chopper or anything like that. It's because America uses the Predator drone. And I, and I like America. So remember the American flag flies highest. Now as I put away all this RAM, you might have noticed that I was doing this with the pins. And don't let people fool you. They will tell you that you shouldn't touch the pins because oils and stuff could affect the pins. These are, these are gold plated pins. Um, to that, my response is actually, you want to put oils all over it, that way it slides in and out of the slot easier. So next we should do power supply. Now, this is always a point of controversy. You, hear, you always hear people say, don't use too big of a power supply because it never goes under load and all these problems. It's kind of like a dong. Is there really a such thing as being too big? I wouldn't know. But when it comes to power supplies, 1600 is the only way to go for a build like this. Wow, how did I, how have I never opened this? Look at this. Ow, that's heavy. Now, Platinum 
It's an overrated metal, in my opinion. It reminds me of catalytic converters. So that's why we are using the gold, because we like to have what we call the gold standard around here. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-wire this power supply, because there's no way I'll get those plugs to actually plug in once it's in there, because this power supply is obviously too big. It does have its own proprietary power cable. The part that goes into the power supply, as you can see, is not standard. The internet will also tell you, don't put your fan face up on your power supply, because that's bad. Oh wow, that barely fit. Ah, sharp! Now the internet would tell you not to route all your cables in, in the main compartment of the case because it will block airflow. You know what, these just pop in there, so I think we can even just turn this this way. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, NZXT has thought of everything. All right, the only thing left to do here is to install our graphics card. Now I don't like to put it in the uppermost slot because that's awfully close to the CPU. Oh, that just like bent the shit out of my USB 3.0. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check that. <laughs> so that you don't lose your cables, you want to keep these where you can easily find them. I'll forget that I put them there, and then I'll be like, where did I put those cables? Now I will always know that they are in here. This baby's ready to rock and roll and play some Fortnite. That's what a computer looks like when you build it by doing all the things the internet tells you not to do. But we're not done. We need to see, does this baby right here post? Turns on, and it turned off immediately. Okay, that's normal for EVGA boards though, actually. They always turn on, turn off, and then turn back on. I asked uh, Kingpin about that once. He said it charges the caps. Oh, it turned off again. Okay, it's posting. <gasps> oh my God, it worked. Oh, I just said skip and I didn't go. Okay, there we go. CPU is currently running at 36 C, 37 C. Um, it's running at 4.5 gigahertz overclock. Why is it overclocked? <laughs> it was like, why not? We'll do a Cinebench run here first, monitor our temperatures. Things are currently idling right now in the 20s, right there on our 7740X. Oh, temperatures are sitting in the 50s. 56C on the package, 55 on the core. So I'm gonna do some Metro Last Light because I still am a huge fan of how much heat that can can actually generate. It's sitting at 69C, 99% utilization, 100% utilization now, and it bounces between 1860, 1835, all the way up to 1936, depending on the scene. This graphics card in a standard case will usually sit at about 70 to 72 anyway when it gets completely heat soaked and saturated. It just dropped from 69 to 68. And we've been running Metro Last Light now for a few loops, and it just simply doesn't care. In fact, the fans have not even ramped up so the bottom line here, guys, is, is not to say this is okay. It's to say that you're not going to destroy your build or wreck your components or whatever the internet would try and have you believe, especially if you're a first time builder. I get so many messages from people that are just terrified to build their own computer because they go to places like Reddit and various forums and they see these, these fear mongers that are out there, you can't do this, you can't do, you're gonna ruin your computer, sure. These are not best practices. We do not recommend or advocate for this type of build procedure, slamming stuff around, touching things, and just being willy-nilly about it. Um, the point of this video was to show you that it is not easy to damage, slash, break, or even F up your build. I thought it was gonna be worse than this, quite honestly. So. Get out there, build your computers, get hands on, take the pride of saying, I built it, and just don't do what we did. But obviously you can see, even if you do, you're not going to ruin it. Guys, we've done plenty of builds in the past where we showed tutorials on how to build it, best practices and stuff. So stick around the channel, subscribe if you're new, and uh, you can just go to our channel, look up tutorial or how to build a computer, and you will find those tutorials. We've got more coming in the future, especially with new hardware launches. We'll talk about that. Also, too, if you guys want to support with uh, t-shirt purchases, you can get these. Link is in the description below. And don't forget, I do have a pretty epic giveaway that I'm doing both with Kyle over at Bitwit. We're giving away a computer th that he built during Man vs. Build. And I've also got my own giveaway going on with components to get your next build or upgrade off on the right foot. Just don't build it like we did here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we will see you in the next one. Thank you.